Hi, welcome to this tutorial in which I have drawn three familiar trig graphs. Y equals tan x, this blue one. Y equals cos x, the green one. And Y equals sin x, the magenta one. And these graphs have been drawn from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees and I've got a y-axis that I've marked here as 1 and down here as negative 1. Now what I'm going to show you is a way that we can summarize some important results relating to these graphs in what is often called a quadrant diagram. A quadrant diagram is a diagram where we draw set of lines like this and we have four regions. This first region here is known as the first quadrant. It goes from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And then this particular area is called the second quadrant which goes from 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Then we have the third quadrant going from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. And finally, the fourth quadrant, which goes from 0 degrees, sorry, from 270 degrees to 360 degrees. Okay, now what we're going to do is, as I say, summarize the results that we get in each of these four intervals. So first of all, I'm going to look at the interval between 0 and 90 degrees. And in this interval, you can see that the three graphs, y equals tan x, y equals cos x, and y equals sin x, okay, between 0 and 90 degrees, all of the three graphs are above the x-axis. In other words, that's saying that if we were to do, for instance, the sine or cos or tan of any angle between 0 and 90 degrees, what I would get on my calculator would be a positive value. So I'm going to summarize these results up. So we've got that the sine of x okay, turns out to be a positive answer. The cosine of x, or cos x for short, is going to be also positive. And the tangent of x, tan for short, would also be positive. In fact, they would all be positive for any angle between 0 and 90 degrees. Now if I look at the interval now between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, what you'll notice now is only the sine graph is above the x-axis. So that indicates that only sine is positive. The cosine and the tan graphs are both below the x-axis and so that's telling us that the results would be negative for both cosine and tan. And I'll summarize this up again in this quadrant, the second quadrant. So we see that sine of any angle, x in this case, is going to be positive. If I look at the cosine, it is negative, so cos of x is negative. And tan is also negative in that quadrant, so tan x equals a negative value. So the only one that is positive happens to be sine x. So I'm going to mark that in here as the fact that sine is positive. Now move on to the third quadrant between 180 and 270 degrees. And when I record my answers here, 180, 270, what do I notice? Sine is negative, so put sine is negative sine of x is negative. When I look at the cosine of x, I notice that too is negative below the x-axis, so I put that in there, that cos of x is negative. And when I finally look at the tan of x, I notice that in the interval between 180 and 270, it's above the x-axis, so it's positive. So tan x is a positive value. So in this one, the only positive value is the tan of x. So we'll mark that in as tan is positive. Now we move on to the 
fourth quadrant between 270 degrees and 360 degrees and repeat the process again. So when I look at in this interval, when I look at the graph of sine x, I notice it's below, so that's negative, so sine x is negative. Look at the cosine graph, cos graph, here we are, it's positive above the x-axis, so we'll put that in as positive. And finally, the tan graph, and when we go over here, we find that it's below the x-axis, so it's negative. So we we'll put tan of x is a negative value. So in this one, the only one that is positive is the cosine, or cos for short. Cos is positive. So I can summarize these results in a simple diagram. We'll draw the quadrant diagram again. Okay, I'll put 0 degrees here. I won't bother putting 90 degrees in. We're just going to try and remember that that's going to be 90, 180, 270, and back home for 360. But in the first quadrant, they're all positive. And I'll just write A for all positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive between 90 and 180. So I'll just put S for sine. And then in the third quadrant, similarly, tan is positive. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, cosine or cos is positive. So we have all sine, tan, cos. OK, now then, what we've done is we've just looked at the right hand side of this graph. But what happens if we look at the left hand side of the graph and we look at what happens between naught and minus 90 degrees? Now, so far, what we've got is turning in this direction is called a plus direction. But if we were to turn in this direction, this becomes the negative direction. And so instead of this angle being 270 degrees as it was over here, if we turn in this direction, this becomes minus 90 degrees. And if we go round to here, this becomes minus 180 degrees. If we carry on round, this becomes minus 270 degrees. And then we come full way round and this angle over here becomes minus 360 degrees. Okay, now if we repeat the process on this side, let's start with the interval from, my, uh, from 0 degrees sorry, to minus 90 degrees. And what do we notice? We notice that the only graph above the uh, x-axis, the only graph that's positive, is the cos x graph. So cos x is positive in this interval and the other two functions sin x and tan x are below the x-axis and so negative. And that's what we got over here. So cos seems to be still positive. And when we go between minus 90 and minus 180 we look in this interval here what we notice again is that tan is the only graph that's positive. So seems okay from what we had before. Similarly, going from minus 180 to 270, in this interval here, the only graph that's positive is the sine graph. And that was true when we went between 90 and 180 over here. And finally, when we go from minus 270 to minus 360, this last section here, we notice that all three graphs are above the x-axis. They're all positive. So this seems to agree again over here that all of the functions are positive. So what we have then is a simple diagram which tells us in which quadrants the functions are positive. And this is called the quadrant rule. And in the next section I'll show you how we use this in order to help us solve trig equations very efficiently.